this is Lindy. And I'm Russell. From Love Cray Celebrate. Welcome to another exterior makeover video. Today's video is all about how we are painting our exterior. So this is gonna be a pretty big transformation. Um, this brown, outdated barn shaped house is gonna go into the 21st century. Hopefully. Hopefully if we're doing it right. We have been testing paint colors, testing different materials, and prepping the whole side of the house, as you may have seen in one of our other videos. And today we are finally gonna be painting it. This video is sponsored by Wagner and we're gonna be using one of their sprayers to transform the exterior of our home. If you have not subscribed to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more outdoor renovation videos. So this outdoor space is going through a huge revamp. You already saw that we prepped the exterior for paint. We took quite a while deciding on a paint color, but we'll show you some of the options we went with. And now we're going to be painting the whole exterior. And after that, we're going to be revamping the back patio and then building a front deck situation and pergola. Kind of spruce up the entrance. So this is our summer and fall of outdoor projects. In case you forgot from our previous video, here's a quick tour of the exterior of our home before we started any of our sanding or painting. Because this is a budget makeover, we're not planning to change out the soffits, the shingles, or the siding at the top of the house just yet. The first big step of this whole project was deciding exactly what color we wanted to put up on the wood siding. So I wanted to quickly go through some of the samples that we chose. You can see we tested a bunch of colors for the house. The first ones we tested were the ones way over there, just like one green, one white, one charcoal. And I think right away, Russell and I both knew we wanted to go with charcoal for the house. So then we got a whole bunch of other samples in the charcoal family. And at the end, my two finalists, my favorite colors, or the raw iron and iron ore. This is the color for the windows. They're all a little bit beat up because they've been sitting outside in different lighting conditions for the last couple weeks while we watched and tested and saw which ones we wanted. But this is the color we have to go with for the windows if we want black because it's a vinyl safe formula and doesn't have any black tint in it. So I wanted to make sure the charcoal we chose looked good with this. The other thing is our shingles are not changing anytime soon and some of the other brown features like the siding at the front of the house are not changing. So I really wanted a charcoal that would pull nicely and go nicely with the brown on the house, which is why we ended up with this iron ore color. My fear with the wrought iron is just that it has some blue undertones and that those undertones would be accentuated and maybe make the roof look oranger or just the colors wouldn't mesh as nice. Whereas because the iron ore has some brown undertones, I think it's gonna look really good with the browns on the house and it looks really good with this black. So that's our final choice. We knew we wanted to use a paint sprayer to paint the house because it's just so much faster. You guys have seen us use the Flexio 5000 many times on our interior projects this time we opted to use a high efficiency airless sprayer from Wagner because we're just dealing with such a large volume of painting and we thought this would make the job a lot easier. Hey everyone, so today we're going to be using this bad boy to paint our house, but before we start I just kind of want to do a quick overview of the unit. So this is the Wagner Control Pro 190. It's a high efficiency airless sprayer. So I was really happy with how this unit worked. I did try it out briefly, um, as you can see with some of the uh, spray on it. But uh, it's really simple to use, which I like. Um, so you have the dial here, which is just controlling the pressure. The paint comes out of the nozzle. Um, you have your, this is your paint line. It gets connected here. Um, this is the gun. You have these tips. So we have this one. It's the 515. Um, and that's what was recommended for doing the kind of exterior paint that we're using. But these are interchangeable and there's different diameters or like it, it, this is kind of what controls the spray coming out of the gun. And there are different variations of this and it goes over in the manual. 
um, for what's recommended for what kind of paint. And even on some of the commercial paints or some of the paints, it will tell you what kind of spray tip you need to spray it. You also have your di uh, dial on here. So right now it's in spray mode, but when you're starting off, you actually put it down like this. And what this does is prime the system. So then you can circulate it into the uh, paint just to get the paint into the sy system. And once you have paint coming through here, then you know that it's primed and you can get ready to paint. You have a little storage here. I mean, I think this would be a good spot if you had extra tips to keep them up here. And also the manual's really good. I had to go over it because it was my first time using a sprayer like this and it was detailed and kind of got me up and running and I was able to paint and it looked really good. So um, next step is just to attach the hose and we'll get the system primed and then we can start painting the house. We did a whole video on how we prepped our house for painting and I'll link that up top for you, but there were still a few things we needed to do including sanding all the top upper siding, which we couldn't do before, but luckily our neighbor let us borrow a man lift, which is a huge help in painting and sanding the rest of the house. Because we were planning on painting all of our window frames, it was also a good time to replace a couple of the windows that had been broken around the house. This bay window in particular was pretty badly broken, so I'm glad that we got that replaced before we painted all the frames. We also had to finish patching a part of our wall that we had never finished patching. This used to be a doorway to the house, but we closed it off to make a bigger bathroom and finally got that patched up. And then when we got up top, we found some rotten boards, so we also had to go back and replace all of those boards with newly primed ones. And our final step before painting the whole house was to pressure wash it. We did this to remove any paint that had been loosened from sanding, but also to remove any dust and debris before we painted the house. When we were ready for paint, we spent a couple hours taping up all the windows around the house. You'll see that we taped off the glass and not the window frame. That's because we were also going to be painting the windows and I'll have a video on that shortly if you want to see how we painted all of our frames. But typically you would just tape around your whole frame or use a shield when painting your house. When it was time to get the paint sprayer ready, we started by opening our primer and putting the suction tube in. Then we put our return tube into a waste bucket and primed the paint sprayer. Then with your sprayer primed, you can put the return tube back into your paint bucket. With your tip guard removed and your spray gun and spray hose connected, you can pull the trigger on your spray gun until paint comes out. Then you can put your tip guard back on and start spraying your house. It's recommended that you keep your gun about 10 to 12 inches away while spraying, which we clearly didn't do at the beginning here. And it's also recommended that you get about a 50% overlap in the paint. What works best when you're doing large strokes like this is starting the stroke and then holding onto the trigger while you go up and letting go of the trigger right before the end of your stroke. What we found worked best with these overlapping boards was going up one side at one angle, going down the other side of the board at the opposite angle, and then finishing off with a stroke up or down the center of the board. You can see we're starting with a primer on our house. This is not the final color. It's important to use a primer on any bare exterior wood prior to painting because it seals the grain, prevents any bleed through, and improves the adhesion of the paint afterwards. So because we had sanded everything and made all of our boards nice and smooth, we really needed to do the primer coat on the entire house. You'll also notice our primer isn't the typical white color. That's because when you're painting with a dark color, you can also get your primer tinted, which comes out in this bluey gray color and makes it easier to do the top dark coat after. Because we didn't want paint on our soffits, we taped cardboard pieces up, as you can see in this video, that helped protect them from the paint sprayer. For any other areas we wanted to protect, particularly the siding at the top of the house that we weren't painting, 
we used this paint shield that we got from our local Sherwin Williams for only about $30 and it did a really good job of protecting those surfaces. We'll also include a link for this shield on Amazon if you want to check it out. Primer actually dried very quickly on the house, but we still waited until the next day to start painting our first coat of the new color, which was Iron Ore by Sherwin Williams. Prepping your paint sprayer for paint is exactly the same process as earlier when we prepped it for primer. If you watch here, you can see exactly when the paint enters the return tube to go into the waste bucket, and then exactly when the paint exits the nozzle into the waste bucket as well. Initially, we thought we would have to do two coats of paint on the entire house, but pretty quickly we realized that it was coating really nicely. So instead, we took our time, went really slowly, and were able to get away with just one coat of paint. Once the entire first coat was done, Russell and I both walked around the house at different times with a roll of painter's tape and just marked any spots where we could see the primer through or we didn't get full coverage. Then we were able to touch up those spots with a paintbrush and there were only about 10 or 11 of them. When we were done painting, here's what the final house looked like. I think we did an amazing job of finding a color that we loved that also played nice with the brown shingles and siding that we had to keep. Honestly, it looks like a completely different house to me. We also painted all of our windows black, which blends beautifully into the rest of the house. And I'll do a whole tutorial on that painting process if you guys are interested. We're also replacing these back doors. These are the new ones, but they arrived missing a piece, so we haven't been able to install or paint them yet, but we will do a full video on that and some more backyard projects soon. What did you guys think? That was a lot of work. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, we are exhausted. Yeah. We also are super thrilled with the results and super proud to say we transformed it into this. I mean, look at this. I love the color so much. I'm so, so happy with it. I'm and just really happy with how everything came together. We're a bit like, there was some nerve wracking parts because we're trying to tie in like a light tan soffit, trying to tie in like dark uh, trim on the edges, like a dark brown. And then we had the brown roof shingles and the siding and we had, and we had the existing door and lights. Like there's all these existing elements that we couldn't change and it all came together and it looks perfect. And I mean, for like less than $2,000. Yeah to completely transform the exterior feels pretty good. 100%. I definitely was a little bit worried about what the different slats would look like on the side of the house and stuff, but I'm so happy with it. I think painting it one solid color made a huge difference. Yeah, I'm happy. It was worth all the late nights and I don't know. I mean, if you include the prep and the paint, there's a lot of hours into this. A big shout out to Wagner. The Control Pro 190 was a lifesaver. Um, we literally could not have done this without it. No. Painting was actually the least amount of work in everything. The, the It was all the prep work that took a lot of the time. 
So that does it for part one of our exterior renovation. Part two is coming end of summer, early fall, as we transform this area and hopefully add a little front porch and curb appeal and really give this some more life. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, hit the bell so you don't miss out on future DIY and home renovation videos. Thanks so much for watching.